Welcome to this video about exponential growth, where we will try to understand the difference between discrete and continuous growth. Before we look at exponential growth, let's first have a look at linear growth. Suppose that you would put some money in a bank account. We place $10 in a bank account. Then we wait one year. After one year, the bank gives you $5, which means that your money in the bank account is now $15. Then you wait another year, until the bank gives you $5 again. If the bank gives you $5 every year, the money in the account will grow like this. After 11 years, we have $65 in our bank account. Since the money increases with the same amount, $5 every year, a straight line can be used to describe the growth of our money over time. From the previous video about the equation of a straight line, we know that we can use the following equation to describe a straight line. In this video, we'll use the letter t instead of x, because we will have time on the x-axis throughout this video. Since our initial amount of money in the bank is $10, we know that b is equal to 10. This is the value where the blue line intercepts the y-axis. And since we know that the amount of money increases by $5 every year, m is here equal to 5, which represents the slope of the blue line. We'll now see how exponential growth works. Same as before, we place $10 in a bank account. We wait one year, but this time we get 20% interest, which means that the money increases by 20%. The money in the bank account therefore grows from $10 to $12. Note that after the first year, the money grows by $2 because 10 times 0 0.2 is 2. After the second year, the money instead grows by $2.4 because we now multiply 20% by 12. The next year, the money increases by 20% again which now results in a growth of $2.88. The money then increases by 20% again, and again, and again, and so forth. After 11 years, we have almost $75 in our bank account. Note that the money grows faster and faster over the years. For example, 20% of $10 is $2, whereas 20% of $62 is about $12. This is called compound interest, because we also get interest on the interest. The formula for exponential growth and compound interest per year looks like this, where y sub t represents how much money we have in the bank account after a certain number of years. Y0 is the initial amount of money we have in the bank account. R is the growth rate, which in this example is 0 0.2 or 20%. And T is, in this example, the time in years. If we plug in our numbers for Y0 and R and add these values, we see that we can simplify the equation to this. To calculate the amount of money after one year, we set t to 1 and do the math. Similarly, to calculate the amount of money after 2 years, we set t to 2 and calculate. Suppose that we like to calculate how much money we have after 11 years. We therefore set t to 11 and use a calculator. We see that we will have about $74 after 11 years. If we fit the curve to our savings, it will look something like this. If we compare this curve with a blue line, which represents linear growth, we see that after about 9.5 years, we have more savings based on the exponential growth compared to the linear growth. The difference between linear and exponential growth will be bigger and bigger over time. The exponential function has many forms and we will now see how we can go from one to another. Remember that R represents the growth rate, the proportion increase every year. Sometimes the exponential function is expressed like this, where A 
is equal to 1 plus r. Since r is equal to 0 0.2 in our example, a should therefore be equal to 1.2, which can be seen as a multiplication factor, because if you multiply our initial savings by 1.2, we'll get how much money we have after one year. If you like to go from this equation to this equation, we can think like we split this number into two parts, where one should go here and the rest here. The exponential function is also expressed like this, where E is the Euler's number and ln A is the natural log of A. Note that e to the power of natural log of a is equal to a. Usually, the natural log of a is expressed as a constant k. The equation might also be expressed like this, where e to the power of p is equal to y0. Suppose that we know that the growth rate r is 0 0.2, then a is equal to 1.2 and k is equal to about 0 0.182 because the natural log of 1.2 is about 0 0.182. Let's try this formula to calculate how much money we have after 11 years. We use the Euler's number rounded to three decimal places. If we do the math, we see that our savings has increased to about $74. The reason why we use e as the base in the exponential function is that it is easier to calculate its derivative, because its derivative is equal to the function itself times k, as we discussed in the previous video about Euler's number. We can use these equations to calculate the exponential growth of a certain population. Suppose that we have a population of 10 individuals. During the year, one person dies, and two new babies are born. Since the population of 10 individuals increases by one person during the year, the growth rate is 10%. If we assume the same growth rate over 12 years, we see that the population has increased to 31.4 or 31 individuals. However, the population cannot go on and grow forever, because there will not be enough food or space for so much people. This is why the growth saturates after a while and approaches a maximum capacity. Such growth can be modeled with a function for logistic growth that we will discuss in another video. We will now try to understand the difference between discrete and continuous growth. A typical example of discrete growth is our previous bank account example, because the bank usually pays the interest only once per year. This means that there is no growth during the year. The growth instead occurs instantaneously at a certain time point. This explains why the increase occurs stepwise like this. If we would have continuous growth, we would instead have a smooth curve over time, where we actually would be able to see how our money grows in real time. Our savings will then increase every second. Continuous growth is usually what we observe in nature. For example, a plant is growing continuously during a day and not stepwise. To model continuous growth, we usually use this type of equation, whereas this type is usually used to model discrete growth. Suppose that the growth rate would be 100%, which means that r is equal to 1. The corresponding value of k would then be about 0 0.69. Suppose that we would have 100% growth rate per year. If you start by 100, a discrete growth would result in that the value is increased to 200 after exactly one year. The growth rate, or the slope, during the first year would be 100. If we instead would have continuous growth, what is the slope of such curve? Since the slope is increasing continuously, we need to focus on a certain point on the curve to estimate the slope. 
We can calculate this by the derivative of the exponential function. Remember that the derivative of this function is equal to the function itself times k. This is its derivative. The slope of the red curve is 69 when the time is equal to zero, which is smaller compared to the blue line, which has a slope of 100. The slope of the red curve is about 74 when the time is equal to 0 0.1, and the slope is about 97 when the time is equal to 0 0.5, and 138 when the time is equal to 1. This explains why the continuous growth rate, which is here 0 0.69, is smaller than the discrete growth rate, which is here equal to 1. For discrete growth, we multiply 100 by 2 just once, whereas for continuous growth, we can see this as we increase the amount by a small proportion every second. After about 6 months, we multiply this small proportion with a larger number, compared to the beginning. To compensate for the fact that the growth is faster and faster during the year, it makes sense that the continuous growth rate is smaller than the discrete growth rate. This is the reason why k is sometimes called the continuous growth rate constant, whereas r is sometimes called the discrete growth rate constant. Since this equation involves a parameter for continuous growth, it is usually used to describe continuous growth, and since this equation involves a parameter for discrete growth, it is usually used to describe discrete growth. However, remember that it is just the value of the base that differs between these two equations. The main difference is just the interpretation of the parameters. When the discrete growth rate is equal to 1, 100%. The continuous growth rate is equal to about 0 0.69. And when the discrete growth rate is 0 0.5, the continuous growth rate is equal to about 0 0.41. It turns out that the continuous growth rate is approximately equal to the discrete growth rate if the discrete growth rate is less than 0 0.1. We can therefore interpret the continuous growth rate as a discrete growth rate for small values of k. For example, if k would be equal to 0 0.02, we can think of this as y increases by approximately 2% for every unit increase in t. If t would have the unit years, we know that y increases by approximately 2% every year. Likewise, if k would be equal to 0 0.07, we know that y is increasing by approximately 7% per year. Finally, we'll see an example where the discrete growth approaches continuous growth. We have previously seen that if you start with $100 in a bank account with an interest rate of 100% per year, then after two years, we will have $400. Suppose that we now instead would get the corresponding interest rate every month, which means that we divide 100% by 12 and multiply the exponent by 12 because the time unit is now in months. Two years now correspond to 24 months. If we now have an interest rate of about 8.3% per month, we'll get more money after two years compared to an interest rate of 100% per year. Suppose that we now get an interest rate every day, which would correspond to an interest rate of about 0.27% per day. Then we will get even more money after two years. Let's say that we now get an interest every second, which is close to representing a continuous growth rate. That will result in approximately the same amount, as if you plug in the discrete growth rate in the equation of continuous growth. Let's focus on this part of the equation. If you let n go to infinity, which can be thought of as if you plug in a super large number in this equation for n, this will approximately be equal to e to the power r. The smaller steps we take, the closer we will get to continuous growth. This was the end of this lecture about exponential growth. In the next lecture, we will have a look at the doubling time in exponential growth. Thanks for watching.